Hello everybody. Today's uh, topic is to finger pick or not to finger pick. I'm not talking about the technique. I'm talking about whether to use finger picks or not. Uh, I'm going to start out and just play a little something with just bare fingers. So just kind of messing around there a little bit. So that's bare fingers, and it's nice. It's a nice soft sound. And you just like the tactile feel of the strings underneath your fingers. You get to feel the strings and where your hands are going. Problem is, sometimes you'll do something like uh, I did just recently. I just broke my thumbnail clean down into the quick, and it's growing back, and so I don't have enough dig into the, the, the bass notes as I would like to have, and I feel like I'm lacking a little bit of control. I have really thin nails. So some people have really thick nails in there. They work great on the guitar. Uh, but uh, it's really difficult. Uh, I have to keep my fingernails fairly short. Uh, I do martial arts, uh, particularly judo, that's a grappling sport, and so you can't have long fingernails and get in there really. Uh, you might actually cut your training partner, or, or uh, you can hurt yourself if your nail gets bent back or something like that. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, a struggle to try to keep a nail. So uh, years ago I started using uh, finger picks and over the years that has kind of evolved. Uh, you have probably all seen uh, thumb picks and finger picks uh, in the music stores and I just wanted to talk a little bit about how, how they, they, they work a little bit. Uh, and you wonder like, well duh, you put them on your fingers and they work, right? But uh, there's a little more to it than that. Uh, there's uh, finger picks are made out of different types of material. There's some that are made out of plastic or celluloid. Uh, there's others that are made out of metal. Uh, they are they come in a variety of shapes and sizes and designs. Uh, I'm going to start first with the thumb pick. The thumb pick I use is one that's made by Herco, and it looks like let's see if you can hold it there. You can uh, focus on it. It looks like a regular guitar thumb pick with a little part that curls over for your thumb to go through. I started using these years ago. For many years I used the straight national uh, thumb picks and finger picks. Uh, but with these, you can, if you want to just do regular strumming or flat picking. I'm not much of a flat picker, but you can. You can play a lead. And you could play a lead, you know, a solo with this and just hold like you would a regular uh, finger pick. I mean, a regular flat pick, uh, it's pretty much the same shape. And so that's kind of handy for, uh, sometimes. I've just gotten used to them. I like the feel of them. Uh, but the Nationals, they are stiffer uh, and uh, you, the, uh, they're a heavier plastic. And you can really dig in on those and really get some really deep, thumpy bass lines happening. So if you're into like the Lead Belly or Leo Kotke down tuning kind of thing, that might be... Uh, the kind that you want to go with. Uh, I've looked all over the house to try to find one. Uh, the last one I had, I must have uh, lost at a gig or something like that, and I have not. Been, I was not able to find one to show you an example, but I'm sure you've seen those in the music stores. So uh, a lot of times I play with just a thumb pick and uh, finger picks. <laughs> So it gives me a nice crisp sound, uh, the real nice distinct bass, and my fingers produce enough volume with just a little minimal amount of nail that I have to be able to keep a fairly balanced tone. However, if I break a fingernail, and then it's like you've got a finger that's just kind of out of out of whack with the rest, and you've got to wait for it to grow back. Uh, I, I also use, uh, and also for some songs, if I've got some really hard driving type of a picking I have to do, uh, as a lot of my early instrumental pieces were, uh, I will use a, a, a finger pick. Now let me show you a, a real common finger pick design. I'm gonna use, pull this white one up here. Okay, this is a Dunlop. Let's see if I can hold this in such a way that you can see it. You've probably seen these in the music store. And these are just like a hard plastic. But you, you may notice something's a little bit different looking on mine here. 
uh, the end on mine is pointed out at a slight little angle with a little curve on the end, a little lip on it. When you get these, these are just a smooth curve that comes up. What you have to do to make them fit to your fingers, you uh, boil these in water. They get real soft, they'll start to open up. Then, uh, sort of like a football mouthpiece where you suck the mouthpiece into your mouth and, and it shapes to your, your teeth and your gums. Uh, these, uh, you just put them onto your finger when, while they're still warm and then it'll shape and you'll, you can tighten it down and as it cools uh, now you have to suffer for your art because yes it does it will kind of burn you a little bit uh, don't it's not you're gonna get third degree burns out of it but you put them on they're kind of they're a little more warm than is comfortable when you first put them on uh, after I, I get the band that goes around my finger where that is uh, comfortable and good and snug because you don't want it to be falling off while you're playing I have had that happen before, that's embarrassing. Uh, I like to have this little lip here, because if it comes up just straight in a curve like they come from the store, you can use them that way, but you really can't get any bite into the strings. And so what I do is after I, I get the band where it fits my finger good, I take a little pair of like uh, sort of vice grip pliers, kind of hold this part together. I dip it down into the, the hot water till it begins to get soft, and I take a little pliers and a little needle nose plier and I just bend the end out and down a little bit and so this one is angled actually for my third finger and you'll notice that I actually mark them I take a little bit of I steal some of my wife's nail polish and I just put, paint a couple little dots on there so this one for there's three dots that tells me it's for my third finger this is the one for the second finger and I have one from a different set. I have them in different colors and things. Oops, there's my number one. And there's my number one. So if you look at these, notice that the angle on the number one is a little bit different. It extends a little further. That's because that's what just the comfortable spot. The second one, move that kind of down with a little darker background. It's just not quite as, as curved and hooked as the number one. And then of course there's the number three. So I use the finger picks on three fingers and a thumb pick on the thumb. I have seen some people, most banjo players, use just the first two fingers and the thumb. And you notice that on banjo, the technique, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not a, a great banjo player, but they normally anchor their fingers on the top uh, to control the vibrations of the tone that comes out of the, 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 the uh, head on the, the banjo. And some guitar players do this too, and that's, and that's fine. Uh, I like to have all three fingers, which is uh, probably more of a classical technique, although certainly the, uh, the use of uh, finger picks is not a, a classical technique, but using all three fingers and your thumb for finger picking is more of a classical technique. So once I get these on here, now I can just rip in. <laughs> give you a lot of power a lot of volume uh, your hand position will change a little bit instead of having your hand kind of up classical style you'll tend to kind of rotate your wrist back in a little bit now if you followed Leo Kotke's career you know that he played with finger picks at the beginning of his career and then he doesn't play with them at all today and uh, the reason for that is just his hard driving style and as hard as, as he was playing he was getting a lot of tension into his hands and actually started to get some like carpal tunnel or something like that. And his, his, he just got where he just could not play anymore. His hand would not move. And just that repetitive stress injury caused problems. And he kind of blamed it on the finger picks. Uh, I think part of that was just the finger picks allowed him to play that hard driving style. And his style has evolved to something much different than it was when he first began. Uh, I had seen his lesson uh, from what he went through. Uh, I kind of modified my approach. So, so that my forearm stays nice and relaxed while I'm finger picking. And that's prevented, I've played guitar for oh, 45 years now and I uh, haven't had any kind of uh, problems with it at all. Uh, one invention that I have uh, taken up using, and these are my favorite finger picks, these are called the Alaska Picks. Now they don't sponsor me or anything like that, although if they're interested in it, I'll be glad to talk to them. I love their picks. Uh, this is the Alaska Pick. And unlike these 
sort of Dunlop picks, which go underneath your fingers. The Alaska pick goes over the top of your finger. And it has these little grooves in the top and they hook under your natural nail. This means that it feels like your natural nail is hitting the string. You feel under your nail the same uh, kind of tension you, if you hit the string with your own nail. Plus, it leaves the pad of your finger open so you can feel the strings. With the Dunlop kind, like this, since it's underneath your finger, you can't feel the string. And so with these, you can feel the strings. I follow the same pattern with these because these, uh, they all come in the same shape and you don't, have, you don't have to boil these. That's another big thing. You can order them in small, medium, large, and extra large. But because they do wear slightly differently from where they, they, they wear down from the contact with the strings, uh, I just uh, mark them the same thing. You'll see I have a one, two, and a three on there. Oops, I got three on the two. Let me flip that around. <laughs> so you just kind of work them onto your fingers. Make sure they're good and tight so they don't slip off. And these are a lot lighter than the other ones, the other strings too. So they feel more like your natural nail. So when they're on, that's what they look like. And you see now I've got my one, two, three on there. And but I can feel the strings underneath my fingers. <laughs> So you can really dig in with the finger picks and you can get a lot of different tone colors and things. So this one uses the pad of the finger. And come down into it. The nice thing about this is it makes muting a whole lot easier because the pad of the finger is there. dig in and you can mute and touch the string. You can use the edge of the pick. Get different tones. And of course whether you pin, play further up or further back towards the bridge you'll get different sounds. So that's the little primer on the finger picks. Oh, metal finger picks, I uh, don't have any to show you. Uh, those are made for banjo primarily. There are some guitar players that like using them. Uh, I've never liked the tone of the metal on metal. And the other thing too is they will just wear away the finish of your guitar. Even if you have a pick guard, it'll around here, it'll just eventually just, you're gonna have bare wood there where it'll just eat up the lacquer after you know a year or so of playing with the, the the, th the metal picks. I uh, never had much of a problem using the plastic picks with that. So uh, that is my little primer on uh, on finger picks. If you have any questions, comments, uh, please put them in the, the appropriate spot below. Uh, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers uh, in 2021, so please like and subscribe and share uh, with your other guitar player friends. Hope this you find hope you find this uh, video helpful. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Bye.